Hello and welcome to Season of War. Back at you today with another Age of Sigmar matchup. Um, Zach, you're coming back to the channel after a little bit of a hiatus. Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, after a little bit, took a little bit of a break. So. Yeah. yeah, but been working hard getting uh, your Beast Law Raiders painted up. So this is going to be their channel debut. Yeah, super excited for it. Um, Ogres, Maw Tribes, my main army, yeah. one I had back in fantasy. So I'm really excited anytime yeah. I get to put them on a table. You're a big destruction fan. Yes. 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 So. Uh, it'll be great seeing these guys on, and as soon as you saw this table, you're like, okay, we have to play a game on this new scenery, obviously the winter theme uh, going strong with the Beast Claw. And mentioning the train, this new table was actually chosen by our premium members to be the next one we created. Um, again, you know, working with printable scenery uh, on all the terrain and whatnot, so super excited to get this on the table, and it's, uh, you know, adds a new uh, battlefield for us to uh, fight on. So our premium members also helped us choose this matchup here today, um, you were bringing your Beast Claw, and they voted for me to play Osiarch Bone Reapers, and specifically Staliarch Lords. So, uh, going to be a fun game today. Uh, a couple new toys, well, mostly just the um, Morgasts, which I just got painted up, uh, ready to hit the table. So, excited to try those guys out. They're sweet models, yeah. higher end, love it. Yeah. But in addition to helping us choose like our missions and matchups and that, our premium members also go a long way in helping us grow and evolve the channel. Um, things like adding new terrain tables, uh, you're, you're listening to us on our higher quality mics that we've now, this is our second battle report with these. So uh, those are two big goals that we unlocked with the help of our premium members. And we have a few awesome ones coming up. Um, a new channel army is the next one, which is super exciting. Very exciting. Yeah. After that, then we'll also be doing a few different specialty games that our premium members are going to get to choose. Um, one a month, so that could be anything from like playing a game of Warcry, or it's also a good opportunity for us to test out different formats, like playing doubles or a team style event. There are a few ideas that we have that we want to test out, different you know, battle styles or game styles, uh, specifically for competitive events. So this might be a fun opportunity to try some of those out if you guys are interested in seeing them. But getting into the mission today, we are playing a core rulebook mission. This is three places of power, again, from the core rulebook. Um, which has a little bit of a different scoring system, which will be interesting in this match. There's three objectives across the middle, um, only three inch ranges, and you can only score them by moving a hero onto them. So any kind of a move lets a hero claim those objectives, and then you score points equal to the number of turns your hero has held that objective. Mm -hmm. so, so it's almost first one there captures it, um, but then if you have a hero slay the hero controlling it, the hero that slayed it takes control, so you know. Heroes are obviously big in this one, yeah. and neither of us planned for this mission, obviously. These are kind of done randomly, so you have two big tanky heroes, but only two. Yes, yes. A yeah. little bit of a detriment on this one. Obviously not having any idea going yeah. in, um, but yeah, so that'll, that'll make it a little interesting seeing what I can do. Yes, and then I have three heroes, so one more, but none of them are, are quite as resilient, so it's definitely going to be an interesting dynamic, but you know, I do have the bodies to screen out a little bit, so yes. hopefully I can keep them safe. But getting to the armies, do you want to take us through your list today? Yeah, so I am obviously running Beast Claw Raiders in Boulderhead. Um, so one of the few things about Boulderhead since it's the first time on the channel. Um, as its general trait, every single monster gets plus one wound to nice. it. So uh, all of them are either at 13 or 14 wounds. Uh, it enhances a prayer, but I didn't bring any priests, because priests are unfortunately not very good <laughs> in BCR. So that's uh, relevant to this army. Um, it comes with the command trait that lets me, if I use it, have my monsters fight at their full profile. Nice. So no matter That's how solid. damaged they are. So very similar to the Gur command yeah. ability. Um, my command trait, which is on my Frost Lord on Stonehorn, lets me move plus one inches if they're, I, I believe it's wholly within 12. Oh, good. So any monster wholly within yeah. 12 gets to move plus one inches. And then the artifact uh, gives me plus one to hit uh, for my beast, and that's on my Frost Lord on Stonehorn. So speaking about that, Frost Lord on Stonehorn is my general that I'm bringing yeah. today. Uh, I got my Husk Guard, uh, and I'm also rocking a battalion, so he has the artifact Alvagar rune tokens. So that lets the bearer reroll hits and wounds, and then lets the whole model reroll saves. Um, have another Stonehorn, Beast Riders over there, and I have three sets of four more. Things. Nice. And then that's basically all wrapped up, except for the Frost Lord and the Eurobag Battalion. Nice. So you were two drop, but able to spread out because I was like seven. Yeah, yeah. So even if I didn't care about my battalion at all, I could still just drop. Yeah. Yeah. For sure. 
And then for me today, as I said, I am playing Staliarch Lord, so excited to get these guys on the table. They're going to be a fast army today, uh, which isn't typical for OBR. Um, for Battle Line, I'm running a unit of 30 Mortech, 10 Mortech, 10 Death Riders with spears, and then 5 Death Riders with swords. And then heroes, again, I have Arcan, Liege Kavlos, who is my general, has my artifact and general trait from the sub-faction. And then I have a Bone Shaper over here. Last but not least, uh, sorry. And then last but not least, I have the Mordast. Uh, they are the, sorry. And then last but not least, I have the Mordast. They are the Harbingers, so they have uh, the 3d6 charge, nice. uh, you know, in conjunction with the running and charging, makes them pretty fast. Uh, and then I have the big halberds on them for the two rend, three damage attacks. Huge. Uh, yeah, so that should be good fun. I'm excited to smash stuff around with them. And then we actually did roll up a realm, and we actually rolled Akshi as our realm today. Yes. Uh, so this is like the coldest part of Akshi, apparently. <laughs> um, but we're just going to roll with it. You know those Antarctic volcanoes. That yeah, exactly. Hear about. Yeah. So uh, somehow there is frozen tundra on Akshi, but we're not going to question it. The mortal realms are weird. <laughs> and then we did choose auxiliary objectives as normal. Uh, just to go over mine quickly, I chose bait, which I'm going to make these five Death Riders bait. So if they die, uh, you got it. Yeah, exactly. Have a good chance of ha that happening. And then my second one is going to be pillage. So picking a train piece wholly within your territory. This is just barely wholly within your territory. Yeah. Um, I just have to have a unit with five or more wounds uh, in it and within three inches at the end of a battle round. Being that it's in the middle of the table, I hope I can do that at some point. Yeah, yeah, oh, for sure. <laughs> um, for mine, I picked one different one that I don't usually pick, but I, I thought it might actually in this case work out pretty well. Um, so I picked Prize Possession. Nice. So that's keep a hero alive to end yeah. of battle round who has an artifact. I'm going to pick my Frost Lord for yeah. that because um, I hope he stays alive. We were kind yeah. of talking about hedging our bets earlier with. Uh, with picking these auxiliaries and I'm not hedging mine at all. Saying all that, yeah, saying I want him to live yeah. and because I need him to live and if yeah. he doesn't, I lose anyway. So. Yeah. Uh, and then my next one I got, I have uh, marked for death. So Jordan needs to pick a unit and okay. that and... is one I need to die. All right, well, I think I'll pick the 10 death riders. It's a ton of wounds. Obviously um, not having to worry about battle shock. It's hard, you're gonna have to do every wound to them. Yep. Uh, so that's gonna be a tough one. So I'll, I'll pick them for marked for death. Sounds good. And then you did a draw me here again, having the battalion being at minimum two drop. Uh, so you are gonna have choice of who goes first here. Yeah, and it made me consider it pretty hard. It's yeah. um, it's tough. One thing that's really nice about Beast Claws, you're not afraid to take first. Yeah. But in this case, I think I will give it to you. Okay. Um, so I think I'll give you the first and let you set up. All right, sounds good. So we will be going into OCR Bone Reapers turn one.
All right, so finishing up OBR turn one, then you gave me the turn here to try and mitigate, obviously, any damage I'm going to do. Yeah. Just whoever moves forward first is going to hit first. Yeah, exactly. Um, and the potential chance of the double. But knowing that you were going to be able to hit me, I did my best to try and slow you down or you know, mitigate your scoring at least. So I spent a couple RDP to move up. So these guys move, they don't take the objective, but they're sitting on it. So you pretty much have to come fight them for it. Yeah. Um, yeah. Now I could have potentially put Arcan or my liege on the back of that objective, but it only would have been a line of more tech in front of them. So you could have hit over. Um, so you would have been hitting those heroes right away. So mm -hmm. play it safe there. Um, over here, I did get my bone shaper on. Just Playing it safe it. there in terms of uh, you know, three walls <laughs> to defend him. Um, He's the squishiest of all of them. Yes, very squishy. I have my Death Riders in behind, obviously. So even with a double, you're not getting into him. So he's scoring me one point for this turn. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's all my scoring. But then over here, I boogied these Death Riders up as well, just to actually try and deny you this objective. Mm -hmm. Now, between your Mornfang and your two Stonehorns, you're going to potentially have some big impact hits. So there's a chance that you just blow those guys a good chunk of them off anyways and still are able to like pile onto the objective and claim it. But I'm hoping I can at least deny you the objective one round. Yeah. Big thing there is if we were both to hold these to the end of the game, but you don't take these till turn two, it means you're missing out on five points at the end. Which is crazy. Exactly. Um, so, so that's the play here. And then, you know, potentially to be a fight over the middle. But I also have these more deaths here and I am pretty quick so I can... Mm -hmm. you know, adjust for a counter punch um, where I want to need to. But that's pretty much it for OBR turn, pretty quiet. So we're just gonna sit here, uh, ready to get hit on uh, going into VCR turn one. It is what OBR is good at. Yes, let's do it.
Okay, so um, interesting turn for me. Some things went my way pretty well, some things mm. uh, didn't. So was able to move up and take that objective. Jordan did do a good screen there, but I, I just had too much damage yeah. going in there um, that allowed me to use my Mornfang unit and my uh, Beast Claw unit, actually just my uh, Beast Riders unit to wipe out the horses, yeah. along with some shooting and stuff like that. It so, did force you to commit a bunch yes. there though, which worked out and I get my bait uh, auxiliary, <laughs> yeah, so I get yeah, that out exactly. of it. Exactly, exactly. Um, yep, so I just piled on him yeah. on there, which was great. Um, it wouldn't really be a bow report with me though if I didn't fail a key charge. So um, I, I had a, a four inch charge to begin with, ish. Yeah. Uh, my Mornfang charged in, did two mortal wounds, which is a huge spike because they didn't even roll that high, but I got yeah. two sixes. You pulled them away smartly, so it made it about a six, six inch, inch charge. Yeah. Uh, I rolled a five, then a four, yeah. which was, uh, that Not really enough. hurt. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so there was nothing I could do there. Yeah. But otherwise, yeah, I just moved up, uh, tried to kill some stuff, tried to kind of get as close to the point as possible um, with what I had and uh, kind of see where it goes from there and really hoping for the double. Here, yeah, obviously, obviously that's the big thing was giving away the turn gives you the chance at that. Yes, yes. Um, I, I, I wouldn't need it, I would say, as much if I was able to get him on the point with the charge. But since I didn't, now I'm I'm really fingers you crossed You want to get those, take claim the objective, make me fight you and kill you off. Yeah, yeah. And and even just the damage he would do to the oh, Mortec yeah. in the center, right? Yeah, um, yeah. So. Awesome. So we can just jump into the priority then. Yep. Let's see where Your we go. size. I got a, a three, you got a six. That's... So. I obviously am going to take it here. Um, mm -hmm. I think that's a good call. The big thing is denying storing, right? Yes. Um, I And replenishing my units, because the more I can do that, the better. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, I mean, it's huge. Like I said, before, if I was able to get them on, I'd be totally okay with you even giving away the turn. Yeah. But now, um, yeah. it's going to hurt a little bit on my side, for sure. Yeah, so now I have to uh, be smart about how I want to take these objectives and try and hold them. Uh, but we will be going into Bone Reaper's turn two here. Sounds good.
right, so OBR turn two, winning priority here allowed me to consolidate, kind of like uh, the reason you didn't want me to get it. So, yeah. you know, yeah. restrict your ability to move on to that center objective. Obviously, I was pretty congested in here, especially with a unit of 30 Mortec. And I was hoping to be able to play this turn without having to retreat my Mortec out. Um, it would have allowed me to pile in, tag your Mornfang so that they're not moving around yeah. and getting on the charge. But I actually had to retreat to be able to get my heroes on the objective. And then I was trying to get my Mordas in a position where they could be on that side and maybe even charge into um, your Stonehorn, try and kill him potentially. Um, but they wouldn't have anyway, so in the, in the end, it worked out better this way. But I ended up putting my Leash Cavalos on the objective first, so he claims it. So scoring me one point there, two for this one because my Bone Shaper still has it. So I have three for the round. Um, obviously, you know, it's big just being able to ramp up scoring. Uh, Mordas went in, finished off your one Mornfang. Um, fun throwing them into combat for the first time with those big three damage weapons. Yeah. And Always fun to play with your toys. Oh, yeah, exactly. So, otherwise, I retreated out my seven Death Riders after I brought one back and healed up another. Charging in, I potentially should have gone there first, but my worry was you getting any attacks and wounds on him because you also have those vultures where if, if you did a double turn, you have four mortal wounds pretty reliably. Um, so I wanted to really make sure I keep him safe. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, so they, they got hit and lost two guys before they got to attack, um, which obviously reduced my output back and I only killed one in a bit. So still fighting for that objective. I'm not safe there quite yet. I was hoping to be, um, but Arcan made the charge back onto this side of the board. So mm -hmm. he's nice and safe. So yeah, with that, end of my turn, we'll be going into BCR turn two. Yes, sir.
So um, in my turn, I basically shifted my entire force over to the middle objective to try to claim it. Mm -hmm. um, through some cheeky pile-ins and some agreements between me and Jordan, I was able to slip my stone horn oh, yeah. right you into got, there. Got in there. Um, able to kill the liege, which was great. Worked out super well. I was pretty excited. Yeah. Um, then Arcan went off and did uh, 11 wounds total, and I missed so many saves. And then a couple more tech came in and poked yeah. the stone horde in the leg one yeah, more time, so and he went down. Wasn't expecting him to die. No. Wasn't expecting him to be able to get into uh, the Leech Pavlos at all. It was it was, it was was kind of a surprise. Yeah. I didn't think so either until I looked yeah. at it. So, I mean, it was... Big charge. Yeah. Being able to lean on the terrain a little bit yeah. uh, made it possible. And then I thought the two Mordas were safe, so I didn't attack with them first after buffing mm -hmm. them. Um, going over here, because I need to secure that objective. But I ended up losing one more dust, which hurt. Mm -hmm. But even though, then the one that stayed, you know, didn't get any attached through, um, which that's what I was hoping, hoping he could do six wounds to the big boy and then Arcan just come clean it up. But he, Arcan had to do nearly all the work. Sadly yeah. though, he remained on one wound after Arcan. So Arcan didn't claim the objective back. But as you said, the Mortet kind of yeah. Wrapped up. They, they did what they needed to do. Yeah. Um, so I would have only ended up scoring two points for the bow round. So yeah. Jordan is above one, and I only have one hero remaining. Yes. So it will depend on this priority roll, but it's going to be really tough for me. It will basically lean on me killing you... all your heroes. Exactly. Um, so we're, I guess, with this priority, see, see where that goes. Yeah. And see if... Yeah, it'll be, this next round will probably yeah. seal the deal. Or potentially seal the deal or see if you still have play. Exactly. Um, but we'll jump into priority. I got a five. A three, so you're going to have choice. Okay. Um, I'm going to need to think about this one. All for right, sure. so we'll be back in a moment. So after a little bit of deliberation and trying to <laughs> figure out what I can do in this scenario, I'm, I am going to give Jordan the turn. Um, one of the main reasons is if I was to stay in combat, I, would, I wouldn't get it to the heroes at all. And plus, I'm against like, still 27 more tech or something, so it'll yeah. be pretty hard for me to squeeze out of there. Um, so I'm going to have to give it away to hopefully get the double next time, retreat out, and then yeah. charge in. Uh, hopefully, some stuff can stay alive through that. Yeah. So we'll see. Because the fear right now, if you retreated now, I would just charge in, tag exactly. you again. Especially with your run in charge, too. Yeah. Like, I'm fast, but there's still a decent chance that you would be able to catch Oh, yeah. Up. Yeah, so, so playing the long game, hoping that you can retreat bottom of three, win priority into four, and go for the heroes. But yeah, yeah, I exactly. will have you know, an opportunity to try and uh, be a little defensive. But with that, we'll go into OBR turn three and see what happens. Sounds good.
All right, so OBR turn three, giving me the turn, as you said, trying to play the long game and uh, get the best chance at going for my heroes. Yes. I tried to take your big stone horn down because obviously that's a ton of your damage output. Yeah. If I do that, you probably wouldn't have a chance at both my heroes at mm -hmm. the top of four if you win priority. Didn't quite get what I needed though. Um, didn't get any hits through with the more dast, and those are good ones for three damage. So could have finished him off, mm -hmm. but not quite there. And you would hit my Mortec with the Geminids yes. for minus one attack. So, but here I store three points for this one. One again for this one because yep. I'm I'm reset there. So four points total, uh, putting me ahead five. So again, like you said, got to go for my heroes. Yes. Uh, play the long game. But we will be going into bottom of the round. Mm -hmm. VCR turn three coming up. Yes. All right, let's get into it. So an extremely long turn here, uh, what I basically did was moved out of combat, retreated out of combat, well, retreated, retreated, moved him up a little bit, and uh, sent a vulture at Archon and did a wound, yep. and that was my turn. Yeah, pretty quick. <laughs> yep. Uh, goal is kind of like what we've been saying for the past uh, few turns here, is trying to retreat, get these guys into that hero, get him into Archon, and then hopefully do something. Yeah. But it, it all depends on this roll uh, for priority. Priority, basically. and then I think a tough one will be charged because you're so slow over there with him now. Yes, That's but I charge. get to spend a command point to and make so him mitigate, move. Yeah. And then also, if I get the turn, I'll have another true. command point to That's make him fly at the too. top of his yep. profile. So it's, uh, it is really dependent on this roll right here. All right, let's see. A two, a six. A six. All, all right. right. Well, that yeah. seals the deal pretty much. So I would take priority here. Yes. Um, at this point, I score four for this one. Yes. Um, and two for this one, putting me at six. And I think at that point, it's just insurmountable. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, for sure. Because I'm up. You, you're already you up got a little three bit. points mm -hmm. on your last turn. I'm up eight right now. Um, and now I'm going to have a chance to make a defensive wall around that hero. Exactly. So you won't be able to get to exactly. him. And even just wipe out the, my remaining guys. I, yeah, potentially. Yeah. Yeah. So with that, we can. Cleanly call it here uh, with the sneaky win for the OCR Bone Reapers. But looking back to the match, I guess what were the keys of the game for you? Uh, so some of the keys, um, unfortunately, it all did start off with that charge roll. But that hurt. Like, like, like I said before, it wouldn't be a bad rep with me if I didn't miss yeah. like a, a five or charge. six inch important re-rolling charge. So that, that was too bad. That was uh, nothing I could really do. That was part of my strategy. So that failed. Winning the priority would have been great, once again, to get him on there. So uh, that failing also kind of let me down a little bit. Uh, in terms of good stuff, though, getting my Frost Lord, being able to clear out that side and getting him on the objective yeah. was great. And one thing that I know I screwed up on in the beginning was my deployment. So what I probably should have done, uh, looking back at it, was place Stonehorn Hero here, Stonehorn Hero here. So if when I saw Jordan piling up on this side yeah. for like a good defensive wall, um, I could have went, okay, this guy can go there or this guy can go there. Because basically my Frost Lord, who is my most damaging unit, um, like he's twos and twos right now on all of his yeah. stuff. And so he did nothing the whole game. Exactly. He, he, he actually didn't even attack the whole game. All he did was pile in once into <laughs> yeah. nothing, right? Yeah. So I think that was, in terms of strategy that I, I could do something about, that was definitely my biggest blunder. Throwing, you wanted them to be on the objectives that we're fighting for. Exactly, yeah. exactly. And so uh, doing that, but besides that, I think I did what I could yeah. uh, for the most part. Yeah, no, it was a really good game. And actually um, sneaking your stone horn in there who just like squeezed in that hole. It was actually a really good play. Um, just trying to, again, using the train to you know, help with movement and that uh, and kind of sneaking by stuff. But yeah, from my perspective, like you said, as soon as I saw... You had a weak flank over here. Yes. I left my big unit of Death Riders, throwing them down here, confident that they can hold that flank. Now it actually took them a little longer. I was uh, I was I surprised they hold they yeah. the more the four Mornfang like that was all that was over yeah. there. Right? They held for a lot longer than. No, I, I 
I was expecting to kind of clear up, clear them up on turn two, but one survived with a couple wounds left, so I had to stick around turn three also. But they obviously held that flank in the end. Would have loved them to be coming down into the rest yeah. of the army sooner. But like you said, as soon as I saw your big frost sword was over there, I'm like, okay, I'm going to try and screen it out, hold him off for a round. You managed to get onto the objective, obviously, but it did force you to put all three of those units over mm -hmm. there, mm -hmm. which then slowed them down getting back into the game. The sacrifice of the you know, bait unit was uh, well, well paid for. Yeah, speaking of which, um, auxiliaries here. Yes. Um, so prize possession, I think I could definitely keep him alive in yeah. the end. Like he's, he's pretty murdery. I mean, even at this point, if we were to continue to play, Jordan probably take turn, um, do whatever you need to do, but I would assume he'd still be alive. And I think I could probably, I, he would live. Uh, but yeah, Mark, I'd say good chance he lives. The Mark, best I would do is maybe turn five, try and set up to go yeah. for him with everything, but very likely that I don't kill him. Yeah, exactly. But Mark for death, I would fail there. Yes, because that big unit's still alive. Mm -hmm. And as I said, I got the bait for having that sacrifice unit die. And then I would have got pillage for yeah. having units at the end of the battle round within three of that terrain piece. Again, we were fighting on that all game, so uh, that was a pretty sure thing. Great game. Yeah. Uh, lots of fun. Always like bringing the yeah. BCR out to, to come play. Jordan did mention when we were going back in that last turn, yeah. actually, that it's two pretty honest armies. Yes. Like, it's not... No teleports behind you, no shooting from yeah. like 30 inches, no line of sight. It's, it's very like kind of go up honest, and attack. Yeah. Honest, straightforward, yeah. It, it, uh, a lot old... more movement play that yes. would need to go into it, right? Like on both our sides, we both had a lot of movement play, which uh, in this it's, case it's won you the game. Yeah, yeah. And uh, it's, it, it definitely became a lot more thinking from that. Regard, yeah, right? it becomes a very tactical game about movement, about your pile-ins, about where you're tagging stuff and, mm -hmm. and all that, which is... Getting to like just focus on that, you know, kind of piece of the game is always fun. And again, not having to screen out for teleports across the board yeah. and, uh, you know, shooting that'll take all your heroes off. And, you know, <laughs> so that was nice. Fun to play an honest game with two honest armies. Yeah. Here, you know, having that third hero uh, was big for me here compared yeah. to your two. Uh, so got lucky there, kind of mission. Yeah, it was great to see the Mordest in action. A little swingy, obviously. Um, especially when I was down to one with only three attacks. But the Death Riders, I feel like, always kind of disappoint me. Um, just not really doing quite what you want them to. Now, the retreat and charge is great, but again, it took me three turns spending RDP of charging, backing up, charging again, you know, with the retreat and charge uh, to finish off that unit. So I feel like to optimize this kind of a build, maybe I'd just go more and more tech, um, drop the Death Riders. The more tech are so fast on their own, right? Even stalkers um, might be good. Um, yeah, and well, one yeah. or two units of them because they were very killy, right? Yeah. I think they would have wiped a little bit slower, but in this case, you didn't need the speed of that yeah. big block. Maybe have like a smaller, more five of a man. mid range kind exactly. of. Exactly. Yeah. I, I, like you said, th these guys go the fastest, but don't hit nearly as hard. The more gas, again, I think they are great. Uh, so I think you know some more gas or the other elite guys in the speed of this sub faction is great, mm -hmm. and even the more tech, you know, running and charging is huge. Yeah. So that's it for today. Great match. Thank you to everyone for watching. Hope you enjoyed this battle report. Big thank you especially to all our premium members who help make all the growth and expansion of the channel possible. So it's a big thanks to you guys that we're playing on this beautiful new table and have some other uh, new exciting things coming up. But again, that's it for today. We'll see you next time. See you guys.